All right. Problem number one. Is it working on both? All right. I'm in. Okay. All right. Find the derivative of each of the following show work. Show ne no negative exponents. Friends, for this class, I'm going to tell you, it doesn't matter to me if you have negative exponents or not. You're not going to make anything bad. All right. So if I want to find y prime of this first one, I take the derivative of the outside first times the inside, reducing the exponent by 1. Then I take the derivative of the inside to get this. And friends, you're totally done with the problem. Yes, you can clean it up if you wanted to, but there's no reason to. Okay. Look at that. You're still looking at that for us. I got that one for you. Well, okay. Let's back. What's that? Oh, Nick was the one who's complaining. Oh, that's when it's problem. Because yeah, I got because then, then Nick leans over, and then I got to remember past Nick who's supposed to. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Nick, they're making fun of you. Sorry. So I, I got I got dual boards. We're like, you know, there's a little bit of sunshine going on here. All right, number three, f of x equals 1 over x squared plus 3 raised to the second. So, friends, being that it is a fraction, if you wanted to use the quotient rule on it, you could. But I don't think you need to use a quotient rule on it. I would rewrite this to look like this. If you do that, then it moves out. So then if I do the derivative... Do the derivative of the outside, so you get negative 2, x squared plus 3. Subtract 1 from this, so you get negative 3. Take the derivative of the inside, 2x. Problem's done. Again, you do not have to clean it up. You can just leave it as is. Do what's that? Oh, if you didn't have the negative exponent, it would be cleaned up would be this. Which is totally fine. I, I mean, either one's fine. I'm not looking for, I'm not looking to see all the algebraic manipulations. That's the hardest part of calculus, honestly, is all of the algebra rules you have to remember. All right, number five. Can I move on? We good? Number five. We have y equals four third or square root of three x like this. So I'm going to change this to this. So put it to the one-half power, okay? So a square root, one-half power means the same thing. All right. So let's do the derivative. So y prime is bring the one-half out front times the 4 times the original. The original we're going to subtract 1 from, which means I'm doing this, so I get negative one-half. Then I'm going to do the derivative of just the inside. So derivative of 3x is 3. Derivative of x to the third is 3x squared. So that's done. Uh, you could leave that as an answer. If you wanted to clean it up, you could. Let's see, you have half of 4, so you could have this. So you could change it to that. I don't I think both answers are fine, so you make your best judgment call on how how much algebra you want to do. What do I do? No, I just I actually did the whole Did I do something wrong? No. I gave her the answer and she was trying to tell me I was wrong. It happens. You know, I've been married for twenty five years. I have not been right in twenty five years. But you've always been right. No, I've always been wrong. No matter what. Yeah. I know what it's like to get told what to do all the time. Do you know the dishes in the dishwasher are clean? Yeah. That that conveys to get up, get over here, put them away. Well, you put 
Uh, it's not a joint effort. It's it's Stroop doing it. Me, this guy. All right. Suppose the cost function for a commodity is C at x is equal to 40 plus x squared. Find the marginal cost at x equals 5. Tell what this produce predicts about the cost standard producing additional unit. Calculate C6, C5. All right. So, um, so I think that what we need to do is we need to do the first derivative of this, which is going to give me 2x. And then I could find when x equals 5. So I get to 10. So this is basically find the marginal cost. Ten dollars cost per item. Okay, so that's first derivative. So that's the answer to A. Answer to B. Calculate C at six minus C at five. So all this is, is I'm going to plug my numbers back in here. So I'm going to get forty plus thirty-six minus forty uh, minus twenty-five or plus twenty-five. Excuse me. So 40s cancel out. So 36 minus 25 is 9. So 9 basically becomes the rate of change at C6 to C5, something like that. That's all it is. Okay, so our quiz that we will have on Wednesday, pencil paper, no longer Schoology, would probably be anything from Chapter 4. No word problems. I know you're, you're upset with me because some of some of you love word problems. I don't. Mrs. Klatt's fault. So let's have us work on finish. Will you finish for me? Uh, worksheet. Worksheet. Four point six. And do two through eight evens. That way it'll be, and I'm not worried about the back page. I don't want, I won't be testing you on those. And then tomorrow, we will work on the chapter four review. And then we start getting decrease, increasing mins and maxes. Dude, it's going to be awesome. Look at that. Todd on both boards. Worked for me. I know you're impressed. Now you're going to complain you can't see over Hannah's head. You know, it's going to be my fault. Thank <laughs> you.